One, two, three. Parasite. Pass. <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> you don't think cats should go in the movie called Craig? No. <laughs> Burn it. <laughs> well, good movies. Hello and welcome to Well Good Movies Lockdown. I am your host, David Osger, and I am joined, as always, by my co-host. He's direct from the latest government daily briefing on the coronavirus. It is Craig McDonald. Hello, Craig. Hello, David. How How is everything in, in government? I know it's quite a big change for you from going from a uh, prison to now 10 Downing Street, but, you know, we're living in crazy times. Well, it's quite quiet here at the moment ironically um not many people about i'm not really sure why but yeah no i'm i'm basically doing everything i can i've been i've been in a hazard suit for the best part of uh 96 hours but you know all good let's have a new segment on our website which is just where is craig this week <laughs> and it'll just be you like in a different outfit in a different different scenario um how, how are you finding it with lockdown i don't know about you but it's just when i do go outside now i'm finding like the animals feel like they're they're ruling the roost a bit more um, like I was walking down the street the other day um, to go to the shop and it was like these seagulls and like birds were like sort of like circling above me as if they were like, what are you doing here? This is this is our territory. And yeah, you only need to look at the land to know and what's going on there at the moment to understand that animals really are just capitalizing on the situation. Yeah, definitely. With the, the, the mounting goats. <laughs> yeah. Taking back what is rightfully theirs. I just found it bizarre with that that they were there was a video that somebody took of like the goats like sort of stood on they were like on their hind legs like looking over a fence but they were all like two meters apart and the, this guy was just like even the goats are you know uh, acknowledging social distancing rules but I was just like what are they actually doing are they like watching someone's TV or something? I I don't know. We've got some weird stuff that's all on the internet at the moment. Uh, we're going to be going through uh, more of our like fun uh, tidbits and movie knowledge from the past year because we are now in April, which means that this is our anniversary month of us doing our podcast that originally started as Film Talk and is now Well Good Movies. So we thought today we'll have this opportunity in which we're trying to give you weekly content for me and Craig to go back and talk about some of our favorite moments from the past year. We're also going to be talking about things you may not have heard, unheard clips and bloopers, which are always fun. So things that go wrong, uh, topics that didn't make it into the episodes, you'll get a chance to listen to some of that. Uh, and we'll also be having our regular segments, which are the Film Vault and our Endgame. So they'll have a bit of a twist this week, taking into account how we're looking back at the past year. So... Yeah, it's going to be a, an exciting uh, next few weeks. Our anniversary of our first episode is coming up on the 15th of April. And uh, yeah, so we thought we would sort of build up to that with this. And uh, yeah, I can assure you, we've got some exciting stuff uh, all all penned for that. How, how are you feeling, Craig, a, a year later? I mean, it's been a strange time, right? Um, obviously, we've been doing the podcast for longer than that. But it was just the fact that we've had a year of just consistently speaking to new guests and just getting their opinions on various things it's, it's been incredible fun um there have definitely been times where i've been out of my depth and it's been kind of enjoyable to be in those situations but i think it's been i think it's been like a great experience overall yeah it's been a, a great chance to meet and uh chat to new people make new friends uh, and like you said also challenge ourselves in terms of you know like the content that we're talking about or things like end games um but before we go into sort of like the bulk of our topic, which is sort of talking about our favorite favorite moments, um, I thought I would just bring up uh, our highlights of the week. So like I said, during this turbulent time, there's lots of things uh, online, uh, which people are doing to try and cheer people up um, or just funny observations in, in strange scenarios we find ourselves in. Uh, so Craig, what what is your highlight? Which like I said, doesn't have to be film related. It can be just anything from... Uh, the world of culture and, and everything that's going on at the moment. Hands down, it goes to the video of the guy dancing uh, topless, but every time that he moves, uh, various images of his face are flying across the screen 
and he's having to like match his face <laughs> into them as much as possible. And it, it's just bizarre. It's the most bizarre <laughs> thing I've seen, but oh my God, it's amazing. He's just contorting himself in really weird ways as well. That sort of think of like the guy dancing in like the Gangnam style video on the elevator. That sort of like movement is what the guy's got. And it's just amazing. It's kind of like a human, like guitar hero or like just dance, like when they have the things come up on screen and you do it. It's, and I think there was like a mobile game that used to be a bit like it, where it would show like emojis and you'd have to do the face of that emoji. But the weird thing with that one, when you showed me, is that it's like the face he does, he obviously then freezes, cuts out, and that's the one that then slides across. So it's yeah. not even like he's trying to match it. It is the exact same expression, which is just weird. So it's just a case of he did this dance and then just took various expressions from it and had them fly across the screen at like any given yeah. time i swear there's like a single just... shot where there's a good 10 images of his face just flying around yeah it's In different bizarre. directions and he's having to like diagonally hit them all my favorite uh, my highlight of the week is uh the lady who was doing a i think zoom uh, conference call and uh, put on the potato <laughs> filter and just didn't know how to turn it off so just carried on in their like professional meeting with this potato filter on her so like she just made herself look like a potato in a pile of dirt which was just literally her lips and eyes didn't know how to switch it off so they just carried on the meeting like that oh it's great I'm starting to see I'm starting to see actual like variations of it now where people have just uh, photoshopped in different images over the potato and just they're they're so good <laughs> i just love this all like blank expression of just like yeah this is life now <laughs> yeah and just i just love to think imagine about what they're talking about like if it was something really serious about like investment bonds <laughs> or something like that and she's just there like as a potato <laughs> Oh no, imagine if she's there to like shareholders it's just like i i promise you my integrity is still intact like, Did you please. actually see that the man who was famous a few years ago because like he is like a health professional with the the kids like burst into the room and it was that yeah, video on BBC? I, I, of course, I've seen that. Yeah, That's but like, like he every like, news reporter's nightmare at the moment. It, yeah, but he he returned onto like BBC News the other day and it was but it was with his family like already there and they were sort of acknowledging the fact that now he's he's home working and like he sat there with his two babies and his wife and. And the one kid is still just giving him like aggro, just pulling on him and like climbing on him. And he's just like, sorry about this. And they're like, no, no, no. That's why we love you. That's why we brought you back on. That is your he's like, yeah, this is... noteworthy feature. Yeah. It's like you encapsulate a lot of parents' lives at the moment. Uh, yeah, so lots of funny things out there at the moment, guys. If you have any strange or bizarre memes or pictures or videos that you're enjoying at the moment, uh, like I said, please do share them with us. Tweet us um, at Fresh Take Hub, or um, you can message us or um, send stuff to us on our Well Good Movies or our Instagram page. We'll possibly put up a, a post where you can uh, comment um, and share all, all your fun memes and pictures and we'll we'll send links to the to the ones that we are talking about uh we'll now go on to like i said our main topic which is so taking a look back um at our last year of podcasts which includes uh film talk episodes but primarily our content as well good movies um and yeah this is just a great chance to uh reflect on some of the great guests that we've had some of the funny moments that have been brought up the the great discussions that have come about um, and yeah, just, just celebrating some of our most favorite moments, but also, you know, maybe giving a bit more insight into to scenarios that happened. Um, and yeah, just getting another chance to talk about those films again. So, uh, Craig, you know, is there anything that sort of pops into your mind as, as the go-to or, or the definitive moment that, uh, you think of? I think for me, it's always going to be the moment in our Kaiju episode where, uh, the long running joke of our series was born and i think it's just i think it's just one of the dynamics that i i love about the podcast we have now where like we can just riff with with our guests for a bit about a topic and then come out with some beautiful lines like is that how barney the dinosaur was formed <laughs> yeah 
yeah, it was it was a great example of how, um, especially when you do have guests like Dan, who is a comedian, and like you know Reese, who has like a very like obscure sense of humor, how like something like that just can come about. Yeah, and I had a feeling that would be the first one that you mentioned. I'm actually going to send a link to something I found ironically online, uh, like yesterday. Uh, uh, it's in the chat, so if you just have a look at this, I okay. feel that it's like it's apt for like <laughs> for like a product that we would like need dinosaur world <laughs> so it's actually like a play set like one of those play mats you get for cars but with dinosaurs but the bizarre thing is that it's actually a theme park and it looks like just a normal theme park but there's like toy dinosaurs that you get which kids get to to like place they on learned this map? nothing i thought the entire <laughs> point of jurassic park was showing that having a dinosaur themed theme park was a really bad idea yeah, exactly. And like, that's what I just love about this is that it's not even like a, a, a fantasy dinosaur land. It's just dinosaur park. And it's literally just the map has just got a generic Ferris wheel, a generic roller coaster, a generic tent. So it's as if the dinosaurs literally have just evaded and caused carnage on just a general theme park. Yeah, I mean, if there's something I'm not getting on when there's dinosaurs around, it's definitely a Ferris wheel. But the thing that I definitely would just love to do with this is just get this get like they give you like a bunch of dinosaurs i think they give you like you know seven or eight like toy dinosaurs you to place on this map um but we'd have to get ourselves some toy flamingos <laughs> to, oh like, my god yeah on the map when i actually saw it uh, i realized i was like oh i'm enjoying this and it's mainly because i used to own a game called zoo tycoon which had a dinosaur expansion pack which you would have a little zoo that you could create and uh <laughs> or like you know like roller coaster tycoon you'd have guests and stuff come in and there used to be you'd make the enclosure for the dinosaur one like they'd have just like this high fence for the flamingos or whatever and then when the dinosaur expansion came in you had these giant electric fences <laughs> but you could still use the little hammer to get rid of one of the fences and then they would go run amok and like all your guests would be like ah! would and, they um, kill the flamingos <laughs> they would kill the if you had normal david animals. would only create a path between the dinosaurs <laughs> and the flamingos <laughs> no if you had a mixed zoo they would kill they would eat the other you could still do it with normal if you had the normal zoo game you would let the lions release and they would go eat the zebras and the, the, the guests. But if it was then you had the dinosaur game, they would just go eat everything. Do, but there are Do you know what? I mean, I'm actually really intrigued. Flamingos turn pink because of the things they eat. I was just wondering if a dinosaur only was fed on flamingos, would he turn pink? Is that what Barney the dinosaur is? <laughs> oh, wow. oh, He's a flamingo eater. <laughs> it's a realisation here. Wow. Um, but yeah, oh. that's, that's why I enjoyed Jurassic World was because I was watching it thinking like, this is my dream. This is my childhood come to life. Like they're just releasing the the dinosaurs and they're attacking the people in the park and they're all like flying around. You know, one of the standouts uh, for me, and it, it it's one of the more niche things, and it's it's kind of like that. Is in our first well good movies episode in which we were talking about Spielberg movies, and this is kind of like a fun trivia for people who don't know this at home. Um, and it's something for them to like listen out for now if they never have heard it before. And I, I'd understand if you haven't. Um, but also guests, if you've ever been a guest on our show, then you might have not known that this has happened and you might want to revisit your episode. Um, but we have a tradition of having like our end sign off saying goodbye, you know, telling us to follow us on social media, telling where to, uh, to follow the guests. And then we, we say goodbye and then just our music plays us out. But at the end of that music, we always have just a, a weird random little tidbit from the episode, whether it be a noise or a line or something that we said. And uh, my favorite one, which is the reason that this entire thing started, was <laughs> when... where, you point, where you point out where I accidentally say something inappropriate to somebody talking about their turmoil. <laughs> yeah, it's just you were clearly like so invested in the end game and like presenting uh, the answers and the questions that you just disregarded what Kelly said, which was, um, I'm devastated. And your response is just, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> it's, just... it's just too far. It's get out the car. <laughs> get out the car. Literally yeah. just wow. changes to then. Get, Get out, out of my car. car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, unfortunately, no bonus points picked up in the bonus round. I'm, de I'm devastated. <laughs> That's fine. This time we're going back to tradition. Uh, and yeah, that appears uh, right at the end of our first episode. 
And I mean, uh, you can yeah, hear just, it in the episode as well. It's just, it's just David was like, no, you, you need to hear it in isolation because Craig is yeah. just an awful person. <laughs> it just like emphasizes how harsh it is. <laughs> like, I'm devastated. That's fine. <laughs> like, I was, it was a good game. I wanted to get through it. It's all about David Hasselhoff. Why could I like, not be invested in that? So what I've particularly enjoyed this week are some of the parodies you get of Joker, especially the Joker trailer. So literally just before the episode as well, because uh, we had both seen it, but our guests, had, uh, our guests were partly seen it, partly hadn't seen it. So we all got together and watched the, uh, the SNL sketch of Grouch, which was basically the origin story of Oscar the Grouch uh, from Sesame Street. And it's... It's so good. <laughs> it's just beat for beat. The elements they decide to take from the film and incorporate into Sesame Street was just genius. I'd love to have been there when they when they when the person made that sort of connection and then went, yeah. oh my God, get get me everyone. Get me pens, get me papers, get me money. I, yeah. This needs to be made. And considering the, the timing of it as well. Yeah. Like, what, did it come out like a week after the film? Yeah, exactly. They were really quick on it, weren't they? And, yeah. and SNL does have that sort of obviously topical weekly stuff. But mm. the, considering the production values. I like, know. Yeah, so, but <laughs> it's, you also wish you were in the writing room because you can imagine there was a lot of like, and then Snuffles is a drug dealer, you know, and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, and yeah. It's like, Although the fact that the count is literally like counting pills. Yeah, <laughs> I, I didn't notice the first time, but when we watched it that second time, I saw the like cross out of SE. So it was yeah. just same street. And I was just like, oh, that's great um but yeah I, I think it's a great example of just like said you know a lot of people have taken this film very seriously and talking about different themes etc so it's it's good to take that lighter tone um and it is just a brilliant parody and i think you know um snl has been doing quite well over the last few years you know with um sort of getting it quite on the mark in terms of you know trump and, and all that kind of stuff and previously they might have not been as great but i think that's a really great example of uh of some uh, great comedy um, for myself, something I wanted to uh, bring up and highlight, uh, just because I've seen a lot more stuff about it on the internet, I think it's uh, because he's going through like a 50th anniversary for Scooby-Doo. So there's been a lot of people who saw reviewing the old series and the um, DVD movies and that kind of stuff. So because they're going through like an anniversary at the moment, um, there's just been a lot of like content out there. Like there's been a sequel to uh, Zombie Island released. Um, there's like you know, you can own the original series on Blu-ray and uh, they're talking about the new live action. F uh, well, like, I think it's like a animated film that they're going to be having coming out. Um, yeah, got all of that live action animated film. Yeah, no, I think it's like a CGI sort of film, but, okay. it's, so, but it's not like Tintin. Of like they I mean, yeah. they but... can do whatever they want. It's never going to beat the fact that they give shaggy superpowers in one of the films yeah. and beats up just an entire biker gang. <laughs> that, that has... It's so become so infamous. Now. I love it. Super I love shaggy. it so much. <laughs> Just the amount of people who put like Dragon Ball Z music to it as well. Yeah, that's that's why I want. That's why I wanted to bring up the fact that like Scooby Doo is it's so it's so influential, and the fact that today we're talking about characters like Frankenstein and Dracula, and you know all of these characters have likely appeared in the series and everything throughout the years, and they've made new ones. You know they've got you know rather than the creature of the Black Lagoon, they've got like the what was it like the Scooper. An Anchor Man or something, nice. where he's got like the the divers suit on and everything like that, and um, and that was something quite fun with the the live action movies. You know, people can say, you know, maybe they weren't the greatest of movies, but obviously I was a bit younger when they first came out, and you know, Monsters Unleashed was actually quite quite a unique concept in in you know back in those days. Be like, what they're gonna put all the villains from their you know from the mm. series and stuff in it, and you know it's. It's very silly and it's very much like those sort of like the Flintstones and those live action um, yeah. adaptations you used to get. Um, but I, I think it is telling of like the kind of things you were talking about with the Shaggy sort of meme. You know, it's, it's the kind of stuff that has then influenced like memes and funny moments. People still talking about how mad it is. The Scrappy Doo was the villain of that original film. Um, I still find it crazy that Rowan Atkinson is in that film as well. <laughs> um, but also just the fact when you look at the cartoon series... You've got Vincent Price, like, voicing... Do you remember the... Is it 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo was one of the series? Right. And Vincent Price was, like, the voiceover <laughs> at the start and was just like, you must find the 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo. And then, like, he played a part in in the actual series. <laughs> and then hilariously, 
found 12 of them and then just like stop making it for like 20 years yeah and really then, yeah, they, 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 one of the director <laughs> dvd films was then they found the 13th ghost after all these years uh. i'm assuming they had a vincent price sound alike for, for then <laughs> continuing it's not that a way. hard thing to get though to be honest no 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 um, what are your guys? I believe I could give an attempt. That, that was a terrible attempt. <laughs> Vincent Price, the thirteenth ghost has come finally in the woodwork. It's taken so long. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are your guys' thoughts on uh, Scooby Doo or your memories? I was never really a massive Scooby Doo fan. Um, I think, uh, but I I can totally agree with the idea of its influence. And I think it goes back to what you were saying of like trying to just bring about levity, like with that trailer of, of Joker, which has become such a serious film. It's like, oh, this yeah. film could be the damnest, grandest thing of all time or the greatest thing of all time. And then you just remember that there's these cartoons who've been parodying horror for, for half a century nearly, yeah. something like that. Mm-hmm. And it, it's, it, the thing about Scooby-Doo, which is so fantastic, is you have these spooky ghost villains and it just turns into mm-hmm. a romp. Yeah, mm. which is w- it's one of the best things about horror is if you c- if you don't take it too seriously, you can have a really good time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and it would be fun to see that if like somebody did like you know you could obviously get the parody trailers of like serious Scooby Doo you know all that yeah. kind of stuff. But you know if they did make a live action movie, they could go down that route of making it a bit more serious, not to the the level that something like Grouch will flip Sesame Street because that's more com- comes across more comedic. But they you know they could actually make a genuinely scary. Which is an actual Great Dane or something, but you know, it'd be quite interesting. <laughs> Some stone bloke and his dog getting haunted. Yeah. <laughs> what, yeah. A, in a van. Yeah. <laughs> more, more realistic Scooby Doo. I, 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 I said not to the level of Grouch. <laughs> I would love to like, do an origin story where the original concept was. Uh, Fred's created this whole mystery bus so he could appease the uh, um, is it Velma the hot girl. Yeah. And then yeah. Daphne's, oh, da- like, no, Daphne's the hot Daphne's one. Daphne's the yeah. hot one. And, Vel- and then Velma's like, oh, I'd love to get involved. It's like, <laughs> oh, okay, that's yeah, cool. Yeah. And then they get in the van and it's like, why is the stoner here? Yeah. Exactly. Why is his dog here? It's like, this is where I sleep. And she's like, are we going to solve some mysteries? Yeah, I guess we are now. Yeah. <sighs> And all this time, it's just been trying to hit him, just trying to hit on a girl. But yeah, now he's yeah. now he's started his own mystery business yeah. because the stoner and some nerd got involved. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, that's how most businesses start. I mean, yeah, <laughs> that sounds pretty familiar yeah. to me. <laughs> it, it's just a phenomenally camp, isn't it? It's yeah. not funny. No, um, that there, there are no real jokes. There's nothing no. about it that is recognisably mm. um, quality <laughs> to an extent. But it's. It's that kind of remarkable line where it managed to become iconic, where the images and the kind of themes and ideas just stick with you somehow. You know, mm. it's that rubbish thing which you saw when you were like nine and you yeah. just never forget. No. It clamps onto your like psyche <laughs> and never leaves any of us. And so we all know everything about Scooby Doo, but nobody's ever actually enjoyed Scooby Doo. What I find <laughs> what I find hilarious is that they sell themselves on the basis of like, yeah, we're gonna be a detective agency, we're gonna solve all these is- mysteries. Most of the m- ways they solve the mysteries are, cool, we've tied up the bad guy and just taken <laughs> off the mask. Now we're going to explain to you why the he was the one doing it. You don't need... He's right there. <laughs> you have him tied up. We get it, okay? It's amazing that they have such great... T- and you sort of think to yourself, God, if you guys actually solved, like, real crimes... <laughs> like, you guys you guys yeah. sussed out this, uh, this incredibly <laughs> thought-out, well-planned-out, devious scheme... Man, you guys should probably work for the government. Yeah. Like, it's, you're very. It's like good. you are the people I want hunting down ISIS right now. Yeah, you, you could solve yeah. the world's problems like that. Yeah. Is it in- Someone shoplifted Greg's. <laughs> solve it. Scooby Doo yeah. and the Brexit. Yeah. Is, is it actually in the live action film? I think it's Monsters Unleashed that the place that they live in is called Grooseville or something like that. I don't know if that's from the TV show or not. But just having CSI Grooseville, <laughs> just like <laughs> Velma there, like she's the one in the like the lab, like working things out and stuff. I I, I now want to make that opening theme with just like um with just like music from the Who, like out here in the fields. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, th- that would be quite scary actually when you get the sniffer dog because that would be Scooby like just attacking some guy when he like sniffs the drugs <laughs> and also like l- destroying all the evidence by just slobbering on it and, yeah, and eating leaving it, leaving yeah, hairs yeah. and eating it. Yeah. Um, yeah, just That's thinking awesome. of like a good sort of uh, Caruso po- thing. Like, I guess this Scooby didn't do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Something I did want to sort of challenge uh, you guys on, mainly Matt, because you had this sort of like challenge oh, earlier, like, die, but I you can involve yourself as well yeah. as uh, <laughs> Matt had it. 
But something fun from the Star Wars films, both fun and frustrating, is how much theories have been thrown around since J.J. Abrams brought this whole like mystery box element to the films. Um, So there's loads of random and completely weird fan theories out there. So I just wanted to test you if just from a little sentence or word or name, whether you can guess what crazy fan theories I'm talking about in regards to Last Jedi or Force sure. Awakens. Yeah. So uh the first one I got for you is Vani is Snoke. Vani. Vani. <laughs> I I don't know who Vani is. Is this like a cryptic clue? This this character name is Vanille Snow. I don't know who Vanille is. No. That, and that again, perfectly re- understandable. He's just the guy who walks into Darth Vader's chamber and goes, "Uh, what's his name? Uh, Ben Mendelsohn's character in Rogue One." Oh, um, Krennic. Yeah, he's yeah. like, "Oh, Director Krennic is here for you, Lord Vader," and then he comes out of his chamber. <laughs> this is the guy in a hood, and he oh, looks that old. Guy? Yeah. yeah. So people were like, "It's Snoke," because he's like got a hood on and he's yeah. like it's frail and white <laughs> no like, I believe that yeah, good. yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, that I'm, makes I'm perfect sense that. actually yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so setting up the, the future yeah. villain of the, the you know the sequels from just a guy who knows Vader yeah. <laughs> um, the dead young Lin the dead young is is this the like is somebody a clone this is that um, the the young Lin that Anakin killed, who went Master Skywalker, yeah. is also Snoke. Oh right, okay. <laughs> so there's a picture of that kid, and then a picture of Snoke, and just because they got like a similar mouth and like sort of like ears, they're like it was clearly um, Snoke who <laughs> uh, t- came from this kid. <laughs> Could they both be right? And Snoke is actually like two kids on each other's shoulders <laughs> doing the force that that's why he's so good because he's got two lots of force but that's if that's true when he's then split in half in um, in Last Jedi didn't hurt should... him it was actually two of them just yeah. went off their separate ways well or it's back. just that that kid grew into Vani and then Vani became Snoke so uh, there's, uh, that's the two as well um, Owen and Baru's real killer is this the Boba Fett is Owen and Baru's real yeah. killer because he disintegrates them? <laughs> yeah, it's like, like I, I think that's a pretty solid theory, actually. But why would he want to? Though? <laughs> well, I think well, the, I thought the general idea was that Vader was on Tatooine, Boba Fett was there, and like Vader had him on like speed dial. Was like, hey, yeah, uh, I'm telling my stormtroopers to do something. They're going to do it wrong. Yeah, they do it right. And, and it adds to the like why he says like no disintegration. At the end, he's like, I should have said no disintegration. <laughs> <laughs> Oh well, <laughs> but I I did like the image that came into my mind was just like these stormtroopers like snooping around or something and like just Boba Fett just walking past being that like, looks like they need help and he just goes over torches them and they're like what did you do he's just like I just sorted them out for you we wanted to question them he's just like I don't care like I do what I want but I mean <laughs> it's an interesting theory it doesn't it's not helped by the fact that it's like well if that's true when like more information about like you know the pressing matters actually comes forward it takes him until the next film to even come out of hiding again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, to reference... He's, just, he's a contractor, isn't he? He's, yeah. just, he's just a contractor. Hey, you asked me to help with one specific thing. <laughs> I did that. And why did Vader want to have Baru and Uncle Owen Why killed? are they so His killed? His weird, like, distant relatives. Yeah, Nobody this, was this quite like, as killed. Oh, no, so, as really robo- would- no, so Robot Chicken has an answer to that. Um, <laughs> it does. They've always been a hot couple. <laughs> <laughs> no, so there's a brilliant moment in Robot Chicken is where is where Anakin's car- carrying his dead mother back from the Tusken Raiders. And, like, Owen just whispers to Baru a joke, and they start laughing, and he's like, what? It's like, well, your mother's dead, which means, you, you know, you're now an orphan. Your your little orphan Annie. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's a clip later where, like, stormtroopers are just, like, pouring petrol on them. It's like, please. <laughs> oh, we have a message from Lord Vader. You may now laugh about the little orphan Annie joke. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Um... But yeah, it goes to show how deep and questions yeah. can be raised from uh, these theories. Uh, the E.T. theory. Um, so E.T. obviously exists in the Star Wars universe. Yes. And E.T. is a force user. Uh, is, is a theory that that's how he's able to kind of do all the stuff he's able to do on Earth. Like yeah. make the bike fly. Yeah. He's actually a Jedi. And there's actually the theory as well that Star Wars takes p- place in the 1980s and not a galaxy far, far away because E.T. is like in the E.T. film and also in those films, which would be a bit weird, but okay. Hmm. Um, this one I absolutely love. I never saw this one before until I researched, but like, again, the <laughs> the way your mind thinks, so you think like, that would actually make sense. It would be kind of dark, but... So, um, 
So we said Owen and Baru, so their last name is Lars. So the the Lars Pact, we'll call it. Do you know the, what this the is? The Lars Pact. The Pact. I don't know what this one is. So yeah, I know Sprite. <laughs> this is a weird one. So you know when they're the blue milk scene essentially when they're having dinner there's like a weird like symbol on the on the roof of the like you know just a sort of oh. like oh look a, a, a space arabic sort of symbol or whatever <laughs> yeah some people have said that la looks like darth maul's tattoos <laughs> so because darth maul was ar- alive at this time which we know from rebels and clone wars owen and baru were actually like in leagues with Darth Maul <laughs> and were going to hand over Luke to him when he like came of age so he could train him as an apprentice. That's and w- pretty wild. But also potentially tell him where Obi-Wan was <laughs> as well. That's, that's beautiful because it's also backed up by the fact that they looked like his tattoos and they were on Tatooine. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> and... But and Inception they put begins. the tattoos of the bloke they're going to sell him to on the on the ceiling <laughs> just to freak the kid out <laughs> before they do it. it he probably just yeah. thought it was a barcode. Well, in in, yeah. in the animated series, he does like set up a crime syndicate, so it would suggest that they're like, oh, this is the subtle reference that we're like a part of a crime syndicate. Uh, We've got this little symbol on the roof or whatever. I, I prefer the idea that they've got Munchausen's by proxy and they're feeding Luke Lenore <laughs> to make him sick. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, the next one, Egg Ray. Egg Ray. <laughs> Egg Ray. Um, is this the? Is this anything to do with like Ray being like Palpatine's daughter or something? It's more simple than that. It's just that Ray is hatched from an egg. <laughs> is that the whole thing? Yeah. So there's a, there's a comic or a book that came out after <laughs> after the Force Awakens where they visit a planet in which people hatch out of eggs and people went, Ray could have hatched from an egg. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Right. Wow. So is that saying that in like? The Last Jedi, she's just there, like, f- clicking her fingers with a bunch of eggs in her back. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, the last one has to be Darth Jar Jar. Oh, this is the whole thing that Jar Jar Binks is behind everything. Yeah. And he's, he's uh, even more subtle Sith Lord than, than Palpatine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can't wait to see him in Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've got a, I got a theory as well. Okay. I thought this might have been, like, for in, in, in the, um, uh, uh, what's the second one called? Uh, Last Jedi. Last Jedi, yeah. yeah. Um, and this also plays into ro- Robot Chicken. Right. Um, because there's that whole bit. Like, they've obviously got the lightsaber back from Cloud City. Yeah. What was that lightsaber attached to? Luke's hand. There was a hand. Yeah, exactly. So if they had a hand, they could have quite easily cloned Luke. Yeah. But they didn't. But that's the... Well, you know the expanded universe stuff where well, there's expanded, a whole thing of they, like them cloning Luke and he comes yeah. back and if Luke has to fight his own clone. Yeah, but thankfully yeah. that's all been decanonized now. Yeah. It, was, it, was, it, was, it was the best it of was, the expanded at stuff. At the time it was incredible. Yeah. That trilogy were amazing. But yeah. Um, yeah, that whole... I thought that that might come up. Or, you know, if not, why not? Why aren't there an army of evil Lukes? Like, yeah. it's a hand. There's so much DNA in a hand. Yeah. I suppose I just always like the idea that it just went into space and just decayed or whatever. But it's like, no, this is sci-fi. We need to like find that hand yeah. and like grab it and um, use it. Also, I've recently <clears throat> traveled to America to watch The Mandalorian. Oh yes, wink, yeah, wink. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and some, some. I'm not going to give any spoilers away, but certain themes of that may be coming back. Yeah. Oh. And, and does also the disintegration thing also come into it, it as well. Does. Yes, it's cool. <laughs> yeah, no, I've seen the one shot where that clearly happens. When I'm I'm actually intrigued as to like how how sellable this is to children as a series from it's just opinion. Quite quite grown up. Because yeah. I, I saw like a Lego set from the Mandalore and I was thinking, actually is this appropriate for children? Because there's baby Yoda obviously. Yeah. But then at the same time there's like the you know, the trailer sets it up to be quite dark, and I was just like, "Well, they didn't have Baby Yoda merge maybe because they did anticipate it to be a bit more adult." But, but yeah, it just got me thinking mm. about like how 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 much it's, of this it's is adult a child's in the same way that Rogue One is, or even Solo, because Solo's yeah. got some quite gross elements in it. You know, some weird yeah. things going on. Like, I mean, as far as episodes go in terms of entertainment, but also just absolute destruction of our sanity. We've got to go with the absolute killer combination of Lucy Fur and Shelley Taylor. Two people who yeah, had never definitely. met before and just <laughs> gelled so well together that we we created a storm that we couldn't control it. <laughs> it was like they had known each other for years, definitely. Basically. And just even then, there are like some really good moments I can just think about. Just like, 
um like Shelley pointing out the 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 joke about uh Lucy's mother being uh being like a police officer and just that like ooh mummy these like scenes where Dane Cook is at the animal sanctuary watching her work and doesn't go up and speak to her and then just walks out and yeah. I was like if I later find out that a man who I was romantically interested in had come to my work watched me from afar without my knowledge <laughs> and then left I would be like mum phone the police like <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I'd ask my mum like, I mean, that's all I do phone the police mummy. my mum works for the police that's what made me think mum <laughs> Like get through quicker, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But just yeah, that was that would be the yeah. moment of realization. You'd be sat in your living room, like, oh my god, he's following me, mum. You know, like, yeah, you, you wouldn't be like, oh my god, he must really love me. You'd be like, I'm gonna end up like with my head cut off in a <laughs> box, like in the middle of the desert. Like, no, this isn't okay. Putting my keys between my fingers. Well, she, Literally, like people, you you can see that like the men writing these things don't think about like how women think and how they live their lives and it's like oh that's so romantic it's like no it's not he's stalking you you need to run he's gonna end up killing you or one of your friends or like oh no it creeps me out so that I didn't enjoy um, I think it was a news article maybe two or so years ago and there was this guy who'd broken up with his girlfriend and he dragged a piano out onto like College Green in Bristol and would not stop playing love songs until she got back with him. <laughs> and all of the comments were women like, that's terrible. Yeah, that's, that's gonna make it worse. That's and that's horrible. really, really, that's like emotional abuse. <laughs> that's like all the That's one hell of a failed crowdfunder, certainly. And it's, <laughs> yeah. And that, it's, that's the weird thing actually reminded me in um, what happens in Vegas is that Cameron Diaz's ex. Um, like realizes when he sees her again, when they like you know she's all happy and glowing when she's with Aston Kutcher, and he's then she bumps into her ex, and then like he goes to her towards the end of the film, it's just like I made a mistake, I want to get back together. I saw you the other day, and I realized you know how much like you know I love you, etc. I get and then, that all the time. And Continue. <laughs> so, so she like you know obviously declines him and everything, but then at the end of the film, it does that sort of like cuts the credits, but then it goes to like an, uh, an after credits or scene, like like very like like two credits, then it goes to the scene. And it's just like Aston Kutcher's friend and Cameron Diaz's friends, who are also a couple, um, just knock on the door of this ex's house. And as soon as he answers, they just punch him in the nuts. And he's like, why? And they're like, you know why? And walk away. And I was like, why, though? He doesn't literally, know why. He didn't do anything. He literally just said, I made a mistake and want to get back with you. Like, I know he was a <laughs> dick at the start of it, but still. Um, that was the breaking point yeah. where he got punched in the nuts. Yeah, exactly. So... <laughs> Um, of course. <laughs> one moment I also wanted to bring up lastly, this is my, my last sort of highlights is the Invisible Man episode. Um, I did love uh, the moment in which we played the Invisible Woman trailer and uh, Chris just broke down with laughter. At the, the bizarre moment in that film that Di sort of like picked up as just out of nowhere. I did not invent that machine to make killers like you invisible. Oh, this is going to be good. Well, those are the noisiest grasshoppers I ever heard. <laughs> yeah, Christopher Columbus were being shot at. Uh, that makes it look more interesting than it is. <laughs> but yeah, that, that, like, that, like, oh, awful loud grouse up as around here. Like, what on By the way, that, that scene where she shoots at them, there's no reason for it. <laughs> like, they're just turning up. She's be, they've been captured by gangsters. And she's just like bonked them on the head, sort of thing. And they're coming up to save her. So she's just like, I'll tell you what, I'll just be a bit of a horror. Just going to shoot at my boyfriend. Yeah. For that, no reason. That's the thing. Yeah. It says in that trailer, they're like, oh, the invisible woman had her many boyfriends. And you're just like, oh, dear. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Only yeah. one of them's her boyfriend. One moment I had to bring up from that episode, and this happened when I was editing it, um, in terms of, again, like bizarre trivia. It was like you were so adamant that uh, that person who was playing the scientist who made the Invisible Woman was uh, the wizard. And I was like, oh, it's the gatekeeper. And you were like, no, he's not the gatekeeper. Like, that's not how Wizard of Oz works. He plays you know, the real life wizard in, you know, Kansas. And then he plays the wizard in, in Oz. And then I looked yeah, it up okay. and it he's is the, the same guy, Craig. The gatekeeper as well. Is this all this episode is? It's just being like, so here's an inaccuracy of Craig's. Well, actually, now I can put the record straight. <laughs> Those thirty ones I'm going to remember. So if you Wait, are you are, are like you now going to be over. are you now going to be playing the 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 Zoe Deschanel clip? Like, 
<laughs> there is just a montage which is similar to that movies of the decade of me saying P- Peter Cushion. I'll just have like <laughs> you saying names wrong and <laughs> being adamant that uh, things didn't happen. But but I'm pretty sure there's plenty of times in which I've said things wrong. But if it, unless you you can bring them up, Craig, then <laughs> I can be totally in this situation. Give me time, David. <laughs> Yeah, guys, we now go to our regular segment, which is the movie vault, which is our opportunity to put films and movies into the vault that encapsulates them for all time and represents, you know, a certain generation of cinema or, you know, what is best to watch for a certain genre or type of film and encapsulates them for all time for people to remember. So it can be the best, but it can also be uh, the worst. So, you know, you might ask, how are we going to do the movie vault this week? Because we haven't really talked about any specific movies or films. Uh, We've been talking about the discussions we've had throughout the year. Well, this is our chance to put in some of the films that we discussed during those episodes um, that we didn't actually put in the movie vault that on re-listen, you know, we should have, uh, or some of the ones that just literally slipped us by. So maybe something that we mentioned at the beginning of the episode and seemed like a shoehorn for the movie vault, but Again, we just didn't think of when it came to the discussion. So, you know, I've jotted down um, a few here, listening back to some of the episodes. And I think definitely uh, the first one that I picked up on was Joker. Um, And I think based on the discussion we just had, Craig, uh, we mentioned the Todd Phillips film a lot during our Joker episode. Um, Yeah. But the reasoning for not putting it into the movie vault was because we needed to see how it did impact culture and like how successful it was. And and you were like a big advocate for putting it in there, but you understood the, th- the thought process of like, well, let's see how successful it is. But, but yeah, I'm willing to say now that now that it's become a billion dollar film and Oscar nominated and Oscar winning, um, it certainly deserves to go in there. Yeah. I mean, the fact that it helped create a massive legacy for not just the film, but the actual character of the Joker, because the Joker has now become the second character to have two actors play it and both of those actors getting an Oscar win. It's just something yeah. that is incredible to think about for any comic book, uh, for for any character uh, within within cinema, let alone a comic book character like the Joker. So I think at that, I think at that point, it's got to go in. And also it's just had an incredibly strong meme game as well. Like, I've seen so m- I've seen so many images of like uh where he get uh where he gets hit by the car and just people putting in like <laughs> yeah. something positive happening in my life reality um yeah, things like that yeah. so I I think at this point it's got to go in that and I still I still love the image of somebody who took a picture of a cocker spaniel uh photoshopped on uh, like Joker makeup onto it, and then just called the film Cocker, and it's just amazing. I love it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I think that definitely uh, deserves to go in. I think as well, what's worth mentioning is we did our movies of the decade uh, at the start of the year slash end of uh, 2019 to celebrate you know 10 years of film, and uh, yeah, w- we sort of broke it down year by year, and it was a similar thought process with that. With 2019, we felt that. You know, it was maybe a bit too early to say about what films have made an impact at that point because there were still award contenders that we hadn't seen. Um, so, you know, Craig, have you had any more thoughts on like big films of 2019 that you feel that they should go in there? Oh, yeah, I think I think there's one that we need to... I I think it is fair to say, had we seen this film uh, when we yeah. recorded this episode, we would have happily put it in the film vault immediately. Uh, it became yeah. and in- instantly one of our favorites. And I think if we, I'm going to count to three and I think we're going to say it at the same time. Ready, David? Yeah. One, two, three. Parasite. <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> you don't think cats should go in the movie called Craig? No. <laughs> Burn it. <laughs> Like, don't forget, David, we had to see the worst version of that film. That's true, yeah. Well, there's also the um, the butthole edit, which is apparently out there. Have you heard of this? Yeah, I've heard of this. I'm not sure if it's... I, I, I'm not convinced it's real. Yeah. But I also have no interest in seeing that either. <laughs> Sorry, just one thing. Do you know something weird that's on uh, YouTube, which like was recommended to me? Um, and again, the comments just explained this perfectly. They were like, 
why am I here? Why is this being recommended to me? And it's Japanese dubs of the certain scenes in Cats. So it's like the like Bust of a Jones in Japanese and stuff. And it is just weird and just as oh awful. My God. But yes, on to the, the good film, Parasite. Yeah, can we? Yeah, like honestly, Parasite has to go in. Yeah, definitely. Just. It is a it's groundbreaking for more than just being the first foreign picture to win Best Picture of the Oscars. It is a beautiful look at like class at like class war, like beautiful perspective, uh, beautiful perspectives. Also, just incredibly clever and funny. It was just a film that we uh, we just watched, and it's just one of those things where I love watching charismatic bad people operating, and just when you look at the breakdowns of various ways in which they frame the film the fact that there's always that invisible line in between the upper class and the lower class characters is just an incredible touch yeah it's definitely just a fantastic film and i think like what you said you know it's it's a film that if we had seen would definitely go in the movie vault but also we definitely would have talked about as one of the films of the decade so regardless of the movie vault, Good god yeah it you know it is definitely up there as a movie of the decade because you know, I, I saw this in cinemas twice and, you know, it didn't go down in value at all. Uh, the second watch and it, there's so much detail in it. And there's one of those films where you see other conversations and moments and thought processes that the director had going into it, which like makes you love it even more. So I think there's the fact that, um, is it that you never see the uh, rich family like uh, in the same shot at any one time? So the fact that they're always like separated, whereas you see like the sort of poorer family, like more together. Yeah, definitely. Um, and yeah, it's just a fantastic cast. And and one that's something that really stuck with me as well is that message that you have. Not only do you have like when the flooding happens in the town that they live in, uh, which is just a great example of, you know, just literally a character's world being torn apart. Um, but you have that great discussion between the son and father of, you know, when he says, like, you know, what should we have done? We should have like planned for this, you know, and he says, that's the thing in life, you know, if, if you plan, then you're only going to be disappointed when those plans don't come to fruition. So, you know, he just lives his life in the yeah. moment, which, you know, is, is great as well. Just the fact that that comes around so beautifully at the end as well with the with the letter being written. Yeah, it, it's it's fantastic. And some uh, other ones which like I noted down. So there was uh, one other film that saw like we missed out from the movies of the decade, which we mentioned. And you specifically said this needs to go in. Um, I don't know if you can remember it, if you can uh, give a guess. It's animated. Normal Lisa? Uh, no, it was Zootopia. So that was one that we, oh, yeah. one we discussed. And uh, you said, I think definitely needs to go in. But just literally, we just didn't announce it when we said the films that were going into the movie world so uh so that needs to go in as a, an honorary just because we did say this needs to go in but it's just we just literally just didn't say the name when we were listing the films that go into the movie vault yeah let, let's correct that shall we yeah exactly and yeah I, i've got another one which i'm i don't know i'd be interested on your opinion on for for 2019 i wonder if you can guess what it is going with the same idea of like films have had been more of a legacy which like you know uh, do something for a genre end game uh, end game did go in so okay i i wasn't sure if we did put it in or not i just i put a question mark in this so i'm you know i'm interested in your opinion on it i thought knives out oh god yeah yeah because potentially like I said it's that that film has still had such a lasting appeal in terms of like it was in the cinemas still up until about january or february and this is a film that came out back in like november so it, you know it had kind of like the same effect as uh the great showman or uh jumanji and that they were still in cinemas for like you know weeks later and yeah lots of people are celebrating it you know continuously uh since and a sequel has been announced so you know you can't deny what that's done for like not only the murder mystery sort of genre but ryan johnson and and that film as a whole yeah, no, I completely agree. I, I recently just watched an analysis video um, of not only what Knives Out does in terms of like subverting uh, conventions of being, a, you know, of a murder mystery, but also um, he also did another video, which was a breakdown of like eight to 10 films that basically inspired uh, Knives Out um, okay. in terms of and it's just a really good and it's also just a really good contrast of just seeing how much knives out 
elevates itself above the murder mysteries that inspires it in terms of what it's trying to achieve so yeah i definitely agree that should go in yeah i've got two more films that i've jotted down as ones that we mentioned in episodes and just seem weird that we didn't actually mention um one is from the musical one and one is from actually uh one uh, two episodes ago which was our sort of cancelled movies but uh, films to watch during lockdown um so i'm not sure if you can okay. guess what these ones are as well the, the interesting thing with that episode is that a lot of the films that we discussed during the episode didn't actually go into the movie vault. It was all films that we then suggested at the at the point of talking about the movie vault. Um, and mainly because we talked about things like, you know, Frozen and Grey Showman and, you know, films that we maybe feel didn't, some people felt didn't deserve the, the you know, the recognition that they had and or were maybe more uh, yeah, uh, yeah. divisive. But I felt that everyone really loved and enjoyed Sweeney Todd. So I found that that was weird that we didn't put Sweeney Todd in. Yeah, I can agree. I can agree with that to an extent. I think I think part of our discussion, like Ali did end up like revealing more and more that there were just elements of it she didn't like. So I think that's probably why it got overlooked a bit. Yeah. But I'd be all right putting it in. Yeah, I, I feel that like, you know, as far as movie musicals go, it's pretty good um, in terms of like, how it's very different it's very musically led and like i said when you get ones like les mis for example which can be you know quite hit and miss with fans you know with sweeney todd again there might be fa- you know fans out there which didn't like what it did and how it changed certain things but generally it seems to be pretty much a big a big uh pleaser for movie fans and then the other one which uh i found was bizarre we didn't put in was this is the end um again because this was one that uh we brought up hot fuzz so we then discussed like Shaun of the dead and the world's end um and that's the moment when we said well if you're going to watch like an end of the world film which is a comedy then the best one to watch is this is the end and that's when dan said oh yeah that is the perfect film to watch during this time and and yes and i agree so i find that that was weird that we didn't put that into the movie vault especially because it was so comedy led and we what we did put in there in the end yeah, so I got a bit of a divisive opinion on this. I, I think it definitely is deserving of going in the movie vault, but given the fact that one of the things we want to talk about at some point is like apocalyptic movies, I feel like it potentially has more of a chance to for us to give it give it its sell during that sort of episode in terms of just a lot of subversions of the end of the world tropes. So you mean as opposed to your traditional sort of Independence Day and that kind of stuff, you mean? Well, yeah, as in like if we if we during that episode want to put in a range of films it would be good to have like yeah like those sort of traditional as well as then just a comedy subversion yeah that's that's true well uh so like i said would you say then it would be joker sweeney todd zootopia parasite and knives out yep i agree with that okay so into the movie vault this week then guys is joker sweeney todd zootopia parasite and knives out into the movie vault you go So in this end game, one facet we haven't actually talked about, which is one of my favorite facets of the end game, uh, are the weird and wonderful names that I come up with for the games. So this quick challenge is called End Names. <laughs> basically, there's a, this is a two, uh, two-part challenge. So basically, it's two questions. So I'm going to ask you the first question now. Right. Two of the games that we did never actually were given official names. Can you remember which two challenges they were? I suppose it'd be the first one, was it? It was just like, we just called it like Lullaby Challenge or something. Because that was the one which was like yep. the end game. So we were sort of more focusing on end game. Yep, that's correct. Uh, the Pixar review one, is it? Yep, yeah. that's correct. Oh, okay. Every other end game was given a name. Yeah. So your second challenge, name them. <laughs> so there's Who's That Pokemon from the second episode. Correct. Oh no, that was the third episode. episode. So the second one would have been. Uh, uh, I'll accept one of two answers, basically. Marvel or not Marvel? Yeah. Yep, that is the one name. I'll, that's one of the names I'll accept. The other one is we're in the end game now. Oh, okay. Right. So Marvel or not Marvel? Who's that Pokemon? And then we go to uh, Florida Man Challenge. Florida Man Challenge. Yep. And then is that he's got you've you've is that you got me monologuing from the Dan and Joes? episode that is one of them i look at the list of episodes i mean i'll happily tell you what the theme of each episode was and then just let you yeah 
guess the name of the end game. Okay. Right? So the Pixar one we've already covered. Uh, the Disney episode. Was it Twice Upon a Dream or something like that? Nope. It was After Happily Ever After. Oh, uh, yeah. Then the next one was the Comic-Con future comic book one. So that was Pitch Please. Yep. Next one was the the film music and Disney Plus. I can't remember that one, the name. We finish each other's... Oh, right, it was actually. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's what confused yeah. me. I... Why didn't you say it? I was thinking that was one of the yeah, questions was... answers. I thought it was like finish the sentence and that's why I got confused. No, no, it was insults. It was like, we'll play an insult and they have to complete yeah, it. Yeah, and then you called it that and then that's why they said sandwiches. So the next one, the one with uh, Matt. So uh, this is also the last episode of uh, Film Talk. So that was uh, Who Gets Snapped, is it? Or? It was called Oh Snap. Oh, yes. Now we're on to Well Good Movies. So this was What's All the Hasselhoff About, is it? Correct. Next. Uh, then it was The Joker Laughs was... You know this, David. Oh, um, Think of the joke from Joker. Everyone laughed when I said I wanted to be a comedian. Well, what's the punchline? I can't remember. Who's laughing now? Oh, yeah, of course. All right, next up is the horror episode. Oh, I can't remember that one, actually. The name. I know what we did. The ultimate horror lineup. Right, yeah. Next up was the musicals episode. This is just evidence of how little he listens to me, to be <laughs> honest, guys. Again, I can remember what happened, but I was trying to think what we would have named it. It's like... Uh, I think it's really like bizarre so pass <laughs> The Sound of Musicals oh yeah that's embarrassing David it's like oh it's something really obscure no it's like the easiest thing I could have done well it was a musical that we didn't mention at least <laughs> okay right It next up is the Christmas episode I'll give you a bonus point if you actually mention because there was the official name of the game and what I wanted to call it oh god yeah lists out for the lads was <laughs> what you wanted to which call is it. what i wanted to call it um yeah, yeah so is this bad that i can't actually remember the real one as highly as i can now it's the name of a popular christmas song but just altered all i want for christmas is who oh uh next up was the star trek episode uh that was pitch please two yep Next up was the end of the decade. Endgame winners? I don't know what the name End of year end games. Okay. Next up was Star Wars. Mine's blank. It was Endgame episode 18. We finish each other's. Ah, oh, right, okay. <laughs> yeah, next up was the uh, the DC episode. That was to be or not. Uh, to DC or not to DC. Or not DC. No, get it right. It's not to DC. It's DC or not DC. That is the question. Yeah, yeah. Next up was the Valentine's episode. Bad romance. Correct. Next up was the Invisible Man. That was Dude Where's My Friend. Yep. Next up was uh, DreamWorks. No, I can't remember. Give up. Yeah. It was it was DreamWorks of Art. Ah yes. Just goes to show if it has a picture in it, then I like no, I'm like more visual. <laughs> Well, I'm I'm trying my best, David. Okay. Okay. Next up is the cancelled films and like home viewing recommendations episode with uh, Dan Killenane. Trailer talk or something. Trailers and tribulations. Oh, okay. And then finally, it was last week's episode. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this... Welcome to my themes park. Oh yes. Okay. So at the end of that, I can say, David, that you had. Uh, a terrible time of that game so uh, congratulations it's fine I, I didn't I wasn't up against somebody so it hasn't it hasn't tarnished my like winning streak no but what it has done is tarnish your reputation with me <laughs> um, but those are a those are the range of games that we do. Obviously, there were some that we think are really good to come back to from time to time but we're constantly trying to come up with uh, new and in- inventive ideas uh, for various for various games and as always i will continue to come up with weird and inventive names for all of those games so <laughs> whether thank they you get very much. remembered or not <laughs> i i guarantee you i bet our guests would remember the names of their end games <laughs> uh yeah so thank you craig and uh thank you everyone at home uh, for listening to this uh unique episode in which we've looked back at our last year of content and episodes um i hope you've had fun uh listening to some unheard gems and trivia uh anything else you want to give craig it's been a fantastic year uh last couple of weeks taken outside of that and i look forward to another couple of years hopefully entertaining you all and dealing with david (laughs) 
Uh, well, like I said, it's uh, the beginning of our anniversary month, so we've got plenty more content on the way. Our official anniversary episode will be on April 15th, and we've got something very special lined up for that, guys. And uh, we'll be back next Friday as well, uh, which will have another sort of episode in which we'll be talking about a specific set of movies, which you can kind of have clues to as to what I think, you know, how we came across this idea in a... Uh, a TV show I talked about last time and a film that was recommend a series of films that are recommended by somebody in the episode for that, which has led us to the topic that we want to discuss next week. So thank you guys. Uh, continue to follow us on social media so you can find us well, good movies on Facebook and Instagram. You can also find our parent website, which is fresh take hub uh, online at freshtakehub.com and fresh take hub on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram as well. And yes, please find us on iTunes, uh, Spotify, follow us, like us, comment if you can, and rate us five stars. It is all very much appreciated during this time. Uh, So thank you, Craig, for joining me. And uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing you guys next week. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. I'm devastated. That's fine.